When COVID struck, the world's leading scientists were constantly trying to play catch up, trying to design a vaccine as the virus mutated. Morgues sadly filled up. But a new study finds artificial intelligence could put us ahead of the eight ball next time, forecasting variants before they mutate. In a nutshell, it's possible AI could predict a pandemic and head it off with the help of historical data. The AI tool is called Evescape, and it was designed at Harvard and Oxford. Important stuff. We want to understand it. To help us dig in tonight is Dr. Omar Awan, physician and healthcare contributor to Forbes.com. Dr. Awan, sounds really exciting. I'm not an expert, so, you know, I hear detecting viral variants almost immediately or ahead of time. What exactly does that mean? So viral variants are just the different strains of the virus. So if you remember, uh, there was an original strain that was isolated in Wuhan, China in 2019, and there were other variants or strains of the virus like the Delta variant, the Omicron variant that infected different people at different periods of time. So these are just the different uh, strains of the virus that were present that led to infection. So this new AI tool will be able to predict the different variants before they're even apparent before they're actually infecting individuals. So a really exciting tool uh, for the future of public health. And would that change how they develop vaccines? Because I'm thinking, all right, you have all the historical data and you could say this one looks like it would behave that, you know, the tail and the spike would do this. Do you go all in making sure that that's the vaccine? I mean, because what if you're wrong? Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be huge for vaccine development because, you know, this study that was published in Nature showed that this Evescape was able to predict all of the variants before they actually occurred. So had it been used pre-2020, it would have been able to predict every single concerning and prevalent variant. And that's a big deal. And that's a big deal, right? Because making vaccines is not easy. You know, you have to be able to predict which uh, strain or which variant is most prevalent, which one is going to be most transmissible, which one is going to be most concerning and result in the most severe illness. So to be able to know beforehand, uh, you can tailor the vaccine to target that variant and that hopefully it'll be effective and hopefully it can save more lives and, you know, treat as many patients as possible. Yeah. And we've seen with the flu, you know, you don't always get it exactly right. And then I read in your article, this can go down to the individual as well, that it's, you know, they can figure out the strain you're most likely to get. So not entirely, Chan. So it's not that it'll tell you what strain you specifically are getting, but it'll tell the strain that's going to be most popular or most prevalent in society or in the general population. But from an individual level, it does have some implications because let's say, you know, it's able to predict the different strain and you get, you know, strain A versus somebody else getting strain B. Well, then certain therapies can be tailored for you. So let's say strain A has, you know, symptoms or A, B, and C, then strain B has symptoms X, Y, and Z. Well, we can then develop therapies that target symptoms A, B, and C versus X, Y, and Z so that Uh, it'll be able to treat you effectively. So in that way, it's somewhat individualized, but no, the the tool cannot predict specifically what uh, strain you individually will be infected with. I see. That's great. I mean, a lot of these medications that are personalized, they're so unaffordable and that most people can't ever attain them. But I wanted to ask you, Dr. Wan, we have been told for years, at least, AI, quantum computing, all this is going to change medicine. You know, for instance, HIV, morphs rapidly. It's still changing quickly. Decades later, scientists can't get in front of it. Could we get the elusive vaccine for something like HIV? It's possible. It's possible, Chance. I mean, really, the the goal, I think, for Evescape is really to develop a vaccine that's able to, you know, withstand a lot of these different mutations. That's really the goal. I mean, that's why they're doing this project, right? So I think, you know, with time, it's possible. But, you know, this is a good sign. You know, this is something that, you know, was not present before. Uh, This is going to lead to, you know, vaccines being available much more earlier than they were previously. I think it will really change the course of a future pandemic, if we were to see one, you know, in our lifetime, you know, it would be huge, you know, to be able to, you know, develop mm-hmm. vaccines in maybe half the time or even a quarter of the time to, you know, roll out therapies that will be life-saving, you know, life change. I mean, the vaccine prevented 14 million deaths globally in yeah. one year alone. Can you imagine if we were to roll out those vaccines even earlier, what the public impact would be? So I think, you know, really great news for all of us. That pinpoint precision, it'd be amazing to save all those lives. I got to ask you, though, that I'm imagining, I'm sure Twitter would say this, a lot of the people who, you know, 
I want to do my own research and what have you. They always tell you to build up your immune system. You know, when you get kids to school, you want them to have a strong immune system because they've already had stuff. But you worry about at all collectively, we're going to lower our defenses too much. Well, our defenses are our innate immune system. And it's just that it's we're born with that. So things like, you know, our skin, our, you know, lymph nodes, our spleen, our blood vessels, these are things we're born with. And we're not going to deplete our innate defenses, right? But, you know, to build up our immune system, to your point earlier, you know, that really relates to the personal choices that we make. So things like having a nice balanced diet, eating fruits, vegetables, uh, whole grains, hot, lean meat, you know, taking care of ourselves by exercising regularly, Lifestyle. staying away from alcohol, tobacco, sleeping seven to nine hours a day, uh, depending on your age. These are things that help boost our immune system. But, you know, this is not going to deplete our immune system. I see. Compliment each other. Dr. Omar Awan, good information. Thank you. We'll be right back.